Okay, do we have a plan? Yes. yes, we do. Okay. So let's go around the table and introduce everybody. Chong, do you want to start? We'll go this way and be okay. easy. My name's Chong, and I'm an observer today as a guest. <laughs> okay. Excuse See, me. See, Chong, can you tell me your last name? Kim, K I M. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. I'm Dave Brown, and I've been on the board for five years. Uh, I'm Joan Peck, your city mayor. I'm Janine Taran, and I'm on the City and Advisory Board. Jim Angstadt, Director of Engineering Services for the City of Longmont. Cool. Carolyn Michael, Civil Engineer with the City of Longmont. Randy Queen, staff here at the Senior Center. Jeff Friesner, and I am filling in as acting manager until we can get somebody hired. And I'm the Director of Recreation, Golf, Library, and Culture. Uh, Marshall Martin, I'm the City Council Liaison to this board. Uh, Prudence Horan, the Secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Beckett, um, just here, two and a half days, or not even two and a half days, it's just started on Monday, so I'm the new Senior Recreation Program Supervisor. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Art Quintana, a board member. Susan Allen, board member for four years. All right. Welcome everybody, I'm glad you could all be here. Um, let's go to the minutes of the last meeting. And I didn't um, have um, Chung's last name, but you do now. I do now, so I can correct us. That's wonderful. Any corrections, changes, questions to the minutes? I think we're good to go on that cruise, thank you. I have the signature page if you could both uh, sign that before we leave. Okay. We can make sure we do that moving forward. Okay. So, since Mayor Peck is. Oh, house. <laughs> but you're the one there, Julie. Julie is another board member. So. I'd like to ask <laughs> Mayor Peck if she has some vision as far as seniors in Longmont and what you expect and whatever, and we'll leave 15, 20 minutes for maybe some questions back and forth, and then we'll move on to Carolyn. Okay, should, excuse me, should we have a motion to approve the minutes? Yes, we should. A <laughs> motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Okay. Anybody seconds? Second. Okay, everybody aye. Okay, thanks. And then I did receive uh, a couple of questions that I forwarded to the mayor for her to talk about uh, today also. Great, thank you. And then I asked Jeff, what is yeah. it you <laughs> particularly want me to address? And he said, um, uh, what is the city doing or can we be involved with HOAs as far as encouraging them to create a sustainable homeowner associations. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually sent this to our legal department uh, and I haven't gotten a response yet, but I will forward it to you when I do. But my gut feeling is that doing anything to electrify a home within an HOA would probably have to be with their covenances or, uh, and, and each HOA is different in those covenances. So one answer probably isn't going to cover everybody. Um, HOAs are a uh, their own government entity. And once they're formed, the city really doesn't have much that they can do within that HOA. So, um, however, I did pull out in case the answer is, you can do whatever you want to your home if you live in an HOA. I did print out some uh, places that you can go for rebates on things like heat pumps and uh, water heaters, etc. I only have 10 copies, so I will let whoever wants them, I'll pass them out to you. The other thing was that you had the same question as it relates to tra transportation, and um, I don't think, okay. 
what can what can seniors do for alternate modes of transportation? How can you get around? And there are several things which I also put on this paper. Uh, we have Longmont free ride program, and you can take that the bus anywhere in Longmont. Uh, the RTD is offers Flex Ride, which is a door to door service that you can call and have them pick you up and drop you off. Um, and some of you may have used these. I don't know if you have. We also have uh, Accessoride, which is also through RTD, um, and Via Mobility Services, which handles, um, it's also door-to-door, -door, but the main thing that Via does is for disabled people to be able to go where they want to go. So we do have door-to-door -door transportation within Longmont and the ride-free bus service. We are also working on trying to get a different connectivity within Longmont. Uh, Marsh is on that uh, committee as well. And we are looking at putting out an RFP for a ride service that would be uh, for all over Longmont. Um, as far as RTD goes, it's difficult right now to work with them. All of these services are lacking drivers. Um, we're having a really hard time getting drivers. Um, but I think that's going to open up a little bit more. Um, just, I had a conversation with the CEO of RTD a while back and, and um, they're hopeful that this is going to open up with the different things that they're trying. So that is, do you have any questions for me in, on any other subjects that would relate to seniors and um, what are they asking you about that we can possibly answer? Comments were made on yesterday's trip about we really need a bigger building. And I know we've talked about that, but it's front and center of a lot of people's minds that we're kind of like busting at the seams here. Okay. Has RTD brought this? Uh, not RTD, I got to get that off my mind. The Senior Center, have you brought that to uh, the city, to Harold Dominguez, to, um, I haven't heard that through. No, but we, we have, Michelle and I had, had always talked over the years about if uh, another recreation center was built, if we would consider repurposing the Memorial Building for more senior type of activities. That's a great idea. Yeah. And you know, next year we hopefully will put on the ballot a uh, overall tax incentive for things that people want within the city, which would be a cultural event center, a recreation center, library. This would fit in perfectly with that. Mm -hmm. And for me, a library would be, uh, I'm sorry, a recreation center would also have a library annex on it, as well as community room for different senior services or things that you offer, like some of these clubs or whatever could meet in a community center as well. Mm -hmm. We have talked about that as we've been discussing that tax and yeah. have proposed we I have think that's, some space there. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. Um, you know, Jeff, you mentioned you've been talking about it for years. Can you give an estimate as to how many years you've been talking about this? I would say at least 10. Okay, yeah. thank you. This is the first time that I've yeah. heard of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so but, that's why I asked, has it? Yeah. Have and, you taken it further to? Well, Harold is aware of it. That Brandy and I have both been attending the quality of life or culture and recreation tax discussions. So he is aware of that. Um, he has, I think, a different plan specific to senior space, but we have included meeting spaces and that sort of thing where senior activities could take place there as well, as well as the opportunity of uh, repurposing the Memorial Building. They also do daycare in that Memorial Building, don't they? We do and summer, uh, the summer, and summer camp. Yeah. 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 So I, I know that. Uh, that type of activity for children, whether it's daycare, whether it's uh, youth activities, yeah. is also part of what we're really looking at. 
So I can see where that would be somewhat of a conflict and that we would have to find some other place for that. Well, my thought would be that it could possibly go to either the existing rec center or the new one when that would happen. Those are good ideas, yeah. yeah. Or if we put a community room on. Yeah, that could go. Yeah. Um, you know, the other, the other thought could be is, you know, expanding the memorial building as well at, at some point in time to add more space there. And that could spe specifically be for senior activities as well. Well, as I look out this window, I see a lot of space out there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. that isn't always used. Yeah. Yeah. So Especially that area directly <coughs> to the west of the Memorial Building, it wouldn't need to encroach into the main part of the park. If Brandon, if I can add a thought about space, you know, one of the space issues here is that our building is underutilized in the evenings and on weekends because we simply do not have the staff to grow programming in the evening and weekends, even though we know that's a need in our community. So we have been talking about staff requests for the 2024 budget. Yeah. And in fact, Jamie and I just talked about that on Monday, about uh, some of the expansion and possibly senior staff and recreation staff working together to, to make that happen. I think that's a great idea also. These, um, these conversations I haven't heard about at all so uh, I am I have to leave early for a 12 o'clock with Harold so I will definitely bring yeah. it up yeah. um, as far as expansion of the senior center um, I guess I'm wondering since much of the population is west of here how is putting another building there going to address all the Googleplex people and their parents. Uh, <laughs> Going. Thank you. Yeah. On the other side of Hover, I see that we want to keep things. What I'm hearing, not what I see, but what I'm hearing is things would be kept on this side and west of Hover there would not be services, so people can use reason to drive, maybe, to come to this side, creating more traffic, of course. Um, so I'm kind of wondering why is, can you help me understand why the thought is, is that everything would be on this side of Longmont when population growth is on that side? The new, is, is, is location, location income-based? Because I'm pretty sure that's a more affluent area. Oh, yeah. It, you know, it is it, not. It is it, not. No. Okay. It generally location is based on availability of land that's owned by the city. One of the proposed locations of the the new rec center mm -hmm. would be out by Silver Creek High School at, mm -hmm. at Dry Creek, right? Um, which would address some of what what you're talking about, Prudence. Yeah, because I I think that. You know, one of the things I've noticed is that activities, including coffee with council, all take place on this side of the line and not on that side of the line. And it could be that because they're much more affluent west of Hover, that they don't feel a need to participate. That That's one thing. I, I think it's something different. I think the way the city was planned it, there are no spaces over there currently because sure. the only thing I can think of is that um, firehouse. The, right, all the way on exactly. the, off the airport. And that's why I, I think that uh, when we build a recreation center, and that is the preferred site at Dry Creek, that we should put a community center on there. Mm -hmm. um, other, other cities have done that for senior services, um, and it works well. So uh, you asked what seniors think this summer the memorial building is used for senior exercises, sober sneakers, and we had, we were taken over by the kids and they gave us a classroom way in the back, too small for the seniors that attend. Mm. So they're like, 
and we don't count, we get this, and then, you know, well, they get money for day camp and the parents need it. Yeah, I agree. We have a problem. Not everybody's being serviced equally. It's a good point. That's a good point. But, like I said before, then that's where I think that it butts heads on what to do with that building because mm -hmm. what, what then do we do? But, you know, if in fact a community room on a rec center, it, that could also be for daycare and kids' activities. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, just a lot to think about, yeah. actually. Just, you know, recent, that's what happens. I'm glad you brought but it I, up. And I, I think that's a great conversation. <clears throat> and hopefully with our new structure, with our department, that we can have a yeah. better opportunity to work right. through those things. Um, because there's other opportunities over at the um, Lashley Street Station that mm -hmm. we could be using and maybe day camp could could work out of out of that location which wouldn't not big enough. Yeah, that's yeah, but it, that, that's but, small. But the, the day camp could possibly be broken into two locations, um, which again then provide more service to some of the parents on that side of town as well. They just have a huge attendance of kids that use the day camp option. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah, I'm, my office is in that building. I, I am yeah. aware of that. And, and I, I will say that when day camp ends, it seems like a morgue in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think those are all things that, that we need to be talking about cross divisions. Right. And, and I think there really is a, a shortage across the, the organization of of uh, spaces with our community growing like it is. Yeah. And I think that's part of the driver of why we're talking about this uh, new tax. So Jeff, in, you, in those meetings, those new tax meetings, have you brought this up and what is the, uh, what are the comments that you get from the group? It, the specific task? to seniors, there isn't, hasn't been a lot of conversation about seniors because it, it has been, mm -hmm. had a different driver, which, provides, um, Harold had other thoughts of how seniors and children and youth and family could be addressed. And, and I don't know all the, the details to those things. But again, with the rec center, we would have spaces that would be used for all ages. Right. I think one of the things we want to make sure we do is that we're not building age specific locations, right. that it tries to serve um, during the day, maybe it's uh, more senior based, and then after a certain period of time, maybe it can be uh, more uh, uh, younger folks type use. And I'm talking about the the meeting space or community rooms that the, the mayor referred to mm -hmm. a, as compared to this can only be used for seniors, right. and then on Saturday and Sunday, it's, it's more for the public. Yeah, share. exactly. Well, I, I do recall when silver sneakers was at the rec center and yeah. i mean i never saw any obstacles going over yeah. here other than promoting the community of all ages yeah. to be together which has some advantage and to share and enjoy with each other so it isn't necessarily that all needs for seniors or older adults need to be separated in their own space um, and I think there's also some other advantages to older adults being in and around all age groups mm -hmm. and likewise there's definitely some advantage. Great point. Okay we're about at our time for Mayor Peck any other questions so we can keep the meeting going? We can have time here for one more. One more, David. Uh, I was the one that came up with the HOA <clears throat> questions. It seemed like a good idea. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I used to be president of uh, HOA, mm -hmm. and uh, I know how difficult it is to get people to do something. And uh, we, we are now part of a larger HOA per village. Mm -hmm. And we have our annual meeting next week. And I was going to uh, approach the president later and say, what are we doing as far as 
sustainability, particularly in regard to the seniors and transportation. So I, I don't know if anything's going to come of that, but I know that HA, HOAs could be a vehicle to, to mm -hmm. be a support for electrification of all of the other programs. But I, uh, so I'm wondering if there is some sort of a, I brought up the question is, uh, let's say if I get involved in that, is there some sort of liaison or contact point yes. with the city? And offhand, I think a resilient uh, long run for the sustainability advisory board, or maybe there's a different way of doing that. Uh, there are two, two ways. Actually, I have one, two, three, four, uh, five contacts here on, on where you can go to look for sustainability. But Susan Bartlett um, emailed me yesterday, and she is the uh, key account manager for Lead and Longmont Power and Communications. She said you can ask her directly any question that you want. So her contact information is on here, as well as grant opportunities, uh, et cetera, where you can go for that. Mm -hmm. So I would like to, uh, but you can, uh, the sustainable, sustainable Advice, sustainability advisory board would be a good place to go to at least uh, express your concerns and have them bring those to the city. David is our liaison for that board, so. Oh, perfect. The sustainability. sustainability. Yeah. I, I'm just going to, if you could just pass those out. It's got the information. One more, Marcia. Yeah, quick, just this is an answer to David's also. We have the Neighborhood Group Leaders Association. Oh. And um, so that is a way to uh, you know, address all of the HOAs and registered neighborhoods that are not HOAs um, and, and ask them, you know, I can see a neighborhood would have objections, for example, to excavating for ground source heat pumps, but yeah. it's hard to imagine air source heat pumps being a, yeah. uh, crossing anybody's covenants. Yeah. What was that called again? Ground source heat pumps? No. Oh, no, NGLA. Uh, NGLA. Neighborhood Group Leaders Association. NGLA. The contact okay. is Wayne Tolmack. And if, you, if he sometimes is slow to contact, to get back to you, Carmen is the one Carmen. that really I'm sorry, what? Carmen. Carmen. Uh, what's her last name? Ramirez. 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 Okay, there we go. That. Thank you, Mayor Peck, for coming and sharing with us today. Yep, anytime. Thank you. Don't Thank forget you. about our open house Saturday. I will not forget. <laughs> um, David, you also may want to look at the Colorado Supreme Court decision regarding HOAs, which was about five and a half, six years ago. And as Mayor Peck said, they are a government unto themselves. Yeah. And there was a lot of things I would like to work with HOAs, but we are, right. uh, we allow them time. in, that's it. <laughs> the city of, uh, uh, state of Colorado, used to be the state of Colorado has a handbook on sustainability, yeah. uh, HOAs, sustainable HOAs, and uh, quite good. All right. We'll publish it. Right. Let's give Carolyn and Jim some time to respond to questions which I know were forwarded to you. <clears throat> yes. And just... Tell us your take on seniors and dealing with them and what's happening. Yeah, so um, start from the top, I guess. So I was, the questions I was forwarded, well, the wording was, where is the city in the process of changing the walk signs countdown into 25 seconds? So I did, I ended up asking Tyler about this. He does work in Fort Collins now. Um, I don't think, I guess I wasn't at the loss no, board no meeting one. he was here, so I don't know exactly what was said, but I don't think that's quite what the commitment was. And it also doesn't, so the walk times are actually calculated partially based on the property distance mm -hmm. at the signal. So it wouldn't make sense necessarily to put that long of a count down time at every location, like Long's Peak and Kaufman is different than right. 17th and May. Um, that being said, um, I believe he was trying to say something to the effect of, we do have a signal timing parameter policy and we'll try our best to try to meet those walk times um, where we have, it's 
based on crossing distance, it is an assumed walk speed of 3.5 feet per second, which is what the Rangers TCD says now says, um, which is it used to say like four feet per second, so it has come down a little bit. But um, and trying to, and it's kind of related to I think another question that's from like 17th and 21st, which I assume is 17th and 21st union. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but we can go over that kind of thing and see if we have, if it's meeting standards now, which based on, I was doing my calculations before this, um, I do think based on what I was getting, it, it might be, I, I was just doing 17th of Maine for South Ward. Mm -hmm. So phase two is the northbound through movement that's in conflict and also the southbound through, which is phase six, but the yellow and red time frame is for those. Um, anyway, it did seem to be, I, I came up to something a little bit short. I was getting calculated 27 seconds. It, the total that's in the controller now is 24. So, and I suspect that has something to do with the compromise between probably trying to achieve a better level of service and the fact that that's probably the 24 is probably enough time for people to get to the at least to the right turn lane where in theory people aren't going as fast and it's not like a through movement that might run over someone now of course that is not always what happens mm -hmm. so i mean it's definitely something we can look into and see what the impacts of it will be um, kind of is part of a larger issue of like trying to balance um, you know, pedestrians, bikes, and cars. Janine? I do have a question. I, it, when you talk about average time, mm -hmm. does that take into consider people with disabilities, parents that have kids that are crossing the streets? I mean, when you say the average time allotted is, what is that based on? And do you go for the average versus what is safe in terms of a person with disabilities trying to cross, you know, four lanes of traffic? Mm -hmm. And the other issue being often mm -hmm. on, and I understand the need to move traffic, believe me, but often, when the light turns and somebody is at least in the turn lane, how many of those cars that are turning right on red anyway <laughs> are paying a whole lot of attention to whether somebody's there or to be able to see them. If there's a pickup truck in the right-hand lane, yeah. is a car pulling up gonna necessarily see somebody coming? So maybe you could yeah. Tell and me then, how that's decided. So that walk speed of 3.5 feet per second, uh -huh. that's from the Maine Uniform Traffic Control Devices, which is published by the FHWA. And so it's, it's a federal guideline. Now you can consider, potentially on a case-by-case -case basis, whether or not you want to maybe base, you can use a solar walk time, three feet per second. Um, you're getting, it, like I said, it's mostly a balance. Of like finding, you know, where is it safe? It, it's and yeah, it's a challenge. I won't lie, it's a challenge to try to meet different needs at these like and then Seventeenth and Main is like arterial, two arterial, well, arterial state highway. So, Marcia, <laughs> there was ever a book that needed to be burned. I formed <laughs> this evidence. Oh. This I'm evidence. aghast you would suggest burning books. <laughs> just that Some one. Just that one. Um, I, I had many conversations with Tyler about this. Um, I have a suspicion that since other parameters in our light system are affected by traffic load and things like that, um, and, and actually change from time to time based on how many cars are passing and how many cars are backed up, that our walk crossing times um, 
could be impacted by that as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know how familiar we are with the innards of the algorithm. Um, but that sounds like an awfully fast walk to me. Um, and mm -hmm. it, you know, there is a huge consensus. People with walkers, just with people over about 55, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, with arthritic knees and stuff, um, yeah. strollers, uh, people walking bikes. Um, there are so many people that can't make that speed. Um, so it, it, yeah. this has been been discussed from the, certainly as long as I've been on this board, which is five years. Yeah, okay, let um, me write that down. Uh -huh. 10 years, five years, uh -huh. okay. It's, it's, <laughs> 10 years, 10 years. Yeah, you win. But yeah, it's, it's, it's it's not safe, and I think if I would like to say it's car centric and it shouldn't be. We're trying, you know, yeah. its objective it's function is lines. trying to Our move. The, it's almost yeah. like we should have more pedestrian underpasses, etc. I cross uh, airport in Nelson all the time. That's a twenty-two second walk speed, and I'd better be huffing along because otherwise I'm not going to get across. Yeah, are you crossing? I'm crossing mostly Nelson or airport. Airport. Because airport, well, it does. I mean, it's probably not super close though. It does have underpasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to measure it. But. Um, going back to Janine's question about right-hand turns, and if uh, you read that, many of the people being injured or, in some cases, killed, have to do with right-hand turns. Um, could right hand turns, could it be looked at at right hand turns like on 17, where there's, I think, I have to think about it, where there's a lot of traffic going here, there, and everywhere? Could it be no turn on red? Yeah. Instead, and, and that doesn't mean for the whole yeah. city, but could it be looked at that at places where there is challenging crossing? Um, for everyone, regardless of their age, you know, fathers with strollers and two kids at the mess, um, could that could that be looked at? That the right hand turn would be eliminated on that. The second thing is, is you're talking about an average, so that means 50% below, 50% above, if I remember my statistics. So this <laughs> there's not really a. Uh, rule from the famous book that Marshall wants to burn um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that you couldn't go above that average is that correct I don't believe so and it will well, well you'd actually be making it slower in this case so you'd be maybe three seconds three feet per second and even lower you know, okay so, thank you you know the bottom line is in areas and at crossings where there are senior housing facilities mm -hmm. and places mm -hmm. where people that can't walk that fast mm -hmm. typically are walking the streets. The bottom mm -hmm. line is, what do we do about that to make it safe for older adults or people with disabilities or mm -hmm. young parents with kids to cross our streets in this city safely? So I, that was like another one on here was mm -hmm. about enhanced crossings near senior housing. And that can mean a number of things. So I was going to ask. Where is exactly, senior yeah. housing? Because there's, I mean, there's senior housing at Knife and Hover, 6th and Main. I've and there's Hover and 14th. Yeah, give us a Hover list. Hover and 14th. Yeah, yeah, I can send you the list. Which, I mean. <laughs> Easy enough. So, so <laughs> what are 1st and Main? Yeah, 21st and Main. Front Street over there. So we're not, we're, we'll look at anything. Yeah. Okay, you know, the answer is if you want us to look at something, certainly we will do it. Okay, one of the challenges for our major corridors, Hover, um, Main Street, 119, those, those corridors um, are on an, uh, an adaptive signal system. That adaptive signal system is primarily designed to move cars mm -hmm. because those are the three highest corridors for vehicle motor vehicle use. They're also, in some areas on Main Street, uh, we get a lot of pedestrians. So when we add more times to 
pedestrian walks to cross main, we would have to take the time in from somewhere else. Uh, what we have, have seen, and I think it's, it has been a grow, growing trend across the country, is that drivers get more and more anxious and they tend to uh, get a lot angrier when they have to sit and wait when they don't see a need walk them. Um, so this is a, just a, you know, it's not a, uh, a reason why we don't, it's just an, an argument, pro, con, whatever. Uh, but we'll certainly look at it. Um, um, I, at this stage, we're not gonna make any changes. Um, uh, that's bad news. Good news is we have a new traffic engineer starting on Monday, and this will be one of the things on his list of things to look at. <laughs> so it is—it's not anything we, we we won't you know we, we will make progress on it slowly, and we will be able to come back in a few months and talk to you about it again. But I would like to get his take on it. Um, he has a, a bit of a different, based on a couple of interviews with him, different philosophy on uh, as a traffic engineer um, coming from a community that moves a lot of pedestrians. Um, more so than cars, um, he is, uh, that was one of the interview questions. So I think he'll have a different take on a few things. Um, the city's also looking at a few things differently uh, now in terms of some of our pet crossings and how we're moving, moving pedestrians. So um, I, would, I would just ask, if it's a wait and see um, kind of decision. Um, but uh, um, we will entertain and, and look at 17, we'll look at um, some more intersections on Main Street but we're not prepared at this juncture to say we're gonna make some changes. Well, th right. thank you for that. My, my question is a, uh, is a signage. What is meant, no right turn when pedestrians are present? That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly what it says. Well, the thing is that we have, and I've seen this on 21st of May, people are going uh, west on 21st at May, and, right. and people are crossing from the east side to the west side, and if there's time, the people are taken off. Oh, yep. And I would think that would be a violation, but I'm just wondering, is that the case or not? Or is that really clear as to what that means? I would, I would argue and make it very clear cut. If pedestrians are present, either in the crosswalk or preparing to cross, that there should not, should, exactly. there should not be allowed a right turn on red. Okay. I okay. Just and the idea sure. is that you can keep traffic moving if there's no pedestrians. Right. Okay. And I was just wondering if more of these signs could be put up in certain locations, possibly. Or could there be something in like city line clarifying? That, like, hey, yeah, that could have be you ever seen too. these road signs? Do you know yeah. what they mean? <laughs> I, you know, communication, getting the message out on, on things is, is always, can always be beneficial. Okay, but just like enforcement, um, if, you, if you post a police officer uh, and they start writing tickets, it's only a short term measure yeah. when they disappear to go somewhere else yeah. people will continue to speed again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was sincere that I really wasn't totally sure on that but mm -hmm. I mean I thought the same just like you're saying yeah. at a crossing uh, you know even yeah. if you have the time you shouldn't be going out because the next car doesn't see the people coming and they might could right. just take off right away too and so yeah that's and and, and so as as you know, I, I made a statement about across the country. There's been upticks in, in pedestrian and vehicular accidents in the last several years. Um, we're in the process uh, currently, Caroline's trying to get it out by December of the our crash report. We publish it every year. It's for the previous five years. Okay, it, it sums up all the accidents for the last five years. Um, I'm sure I have one on here as well uh, from previous years. And then we look at those accidents and then we, we look at certain intersections okay. to draw from what improvements can we make to those those intersections. Um, and and we, we categorize them in several areas. Uh, signalized intersections over 25,000 trips a day. Uh, and then, you know, go down to, to like uh, kind of certain roads where where we see a lot of accidents. Like Main Street, we have a lot of side swipes because of all the parking and the amount of traffic we see. Mm -hmm. That's categorized as well. Um, and I'll, you know, so we, we then program several projects the following year and following years at, to attack some of those areas to see if we can uh, make some improvements. An example will be, uh, I'll throw in, um, we used recently Pike Road and Main Street. Uh, we saw a lot of left turn accidents. So um, we did a couple projects down there and that is now off the list. So we, we do see some, some value to it. Um, you know, some smaller improvements, additional signage can help. Uh, you know, be aware of pedestrians or yield to pedestrians in the crosswalk are signs we've seen and can use. That can help at times, but again, we're facing um, a lot of distracted drivers. 
Uh, we see an uptick in, in either inebriated or, or drivers under the influence in some form. Uh, those are a lot of accidents, a lot of distractions. It isn't just you know DUIs, it's people on their cell phones, people looking at, you know, lost and looking at the map on their, their screen while they're still driving. So we see a lot of those, those um, we try to categorize them in our report as well. Julie had a question. Oh, I didn't have it. It's like each one has to be documented. So unfortunately, you can't use a blanket and Google. Um, so that was filled out. We collected data for that. It, we sent that to CDOT. Um, they responded, you need a special use permit for oh, that. Geez. So that's kind of where it is right now. So, so it is so, a CDOT decision. So at this point, right. we have no idea where that's at. Okay, here we are. Right. <laughs> we got a we got a five. We have applied for, for one of them. Um, we will, we can apply for others. Uh, CDOT has a requirement that if there is, in their manual, uh, their pedestrian crossing manual, if there is an, uh, another crossing within 300 feet that is controlled, they would, they usually don't approve them. Okay, and that's really where we fall into that because there are within 300 feet north and south in those crossings on Main Street, there are signalized intersections okay. that are considered controlled intersections. Okay, so, uh, you know, from a, a, a perspective of kind of practice, um, you know, I have no issue putting it in. Right. <laughs> Funding it, it's a, it's a CDOT decision. We're, we're using them elsewhere in the city. We're looking at one now off of 17th. We put them in on 9th. We put them in, um, I think, over on Mountain View. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are, uh, they tend to be very effective. They get your attention. Um, it's, it's, if we can pre pressure CDOT in other ways, we'll try to get them in, but um, they are, uh, they are rather pricey. Uh, but they are, I think, they're worthwhile. We've seen some incidents on me. There's okay. always a lot, of, a lot of near misses we hear about. And yeah, the so safety. Another point on that. Um, to bring up uh, Councilmember Martin's favorite manual, so the MATCD. <laughs> so RFDs are actually, they have an interim approval. So they are not totally, you know, officially approved yet by the MATCD, which is why CDOT is not. I'm trying to see if we could get a blanket approval for the other two blocks of Main Street and no dice. They want separate data collection out of each of them. So well, I want that's where we are now. <laughs> thank you both for coming. We need to move on to the next meeting agenda item. But can I ask, can I add in one in traffic? Excuse me if I'm out of subject, but since we talk about traffic, mm -hmm. I want to know about the bicycle. Oh, the bicycle yeah. have ever right to go anywhere, any direction when they want to? Because no. I see so many people just <laughs> running to red light and getting in between cars, just going whatever they wanted to. So I just want to know, maybe perhaps somebody can educate me what is that rule for the bicycle? <laughs> so bicycles are required to follow the same patterns as, mm -hmm. as a motorized vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are allowed on sidewalk because they're not considered a motorized vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay, but they have to follow the flow of traffic. Uh, now, the one condition I would throw on is a state statute that just was passed last year that permits bicycles that are in in the roadway or on a bike in a bike lane to they do not have to uh, stop at either stop signs or red lights if there is uh, they have they have to yield the right of way. Oh wow! Okay, so they can go through it. Okay, there, there was a strong push for, for more bicycle movement. Wow. So, um, you know, to the PD were not in favor of it. They were, they were opposed, but uh, it got through. So, so you but, but someone driving the opposite direction, either in a bike lane or in an opposite lane, if they're on a bike, should not be doing that. They should not do it, they but they still, still they have a right well, to do it. They can just pass the red light, it's okay. I've yeah. seen people. People in cars driving to the road. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 you know, Don't be the first one out of the slot. Yeah. One, of the, one of the challenges, and I, I will call it a misconception uh, or a misperception of people, of, of sometimes the public, is that the engineering department and the traffic unit group can, can build our way out of bad behavior. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what we see, you know, uh, we'll show it in our accident reports, is a lot of, of is people making poor decisions, mm -hmm. okay, when they drive. Whether they're they're looking at their cell phone, and we're all guilty of it at times. Whether we're it's a green light, a red light, and I'm like, get the cell phone. My kids yell at me, you know, don't don't check your text, Dad. Okay, my daughter's learning to drive, so she's very vocal about it. Um, 
So, but but that that's one of the challenges we face. <coughs> Maybe we could add for the uh, new business or upcoming agenda items. Invite the new traffic engineer next spring or summer, and we'll get an update. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Yeah. So, if it, Kevin, Jim, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Kyle Haworth, Haworth, H A W O R T H. So, Perfect. and his first name is Howard. Kyle. Kyle. Oh, Kyle. Okay. And what city did he come from? Uh, North Point. Okay. So, thank you for coming today. Thank you sure. so much. Yeah. Let us know if you need us back again. Okay. We, we can, we're always. We're just down the street. Okay. <laughs> <We've got> a, <laughs> New interview Just process for our board. Julian, are you on the board? <laughs> Did you get applicants that you're we, setting up? We have it. I have a call into um, uh, Michelle. Um, okay. To asking her, I haven't heard back from her um, about um, when we're going to. Because she told me I called her a long time ago, and she said that they would do. They would. Um, open the applications, then they would close the applications. She would get us some of the um, questions yep. that are get to me, some of the questions that they normally ask in their interviews so that we could um, create yep. our own. And I have not heard back from her, so I Jeff. haven't gotten anything. So you will be hearing from me. Okay, so great. So I have, we have one candidate that we will need to interview and I'll send you uh, her application and the questions and then I thought maybe you and I and Art could just have a brief conversation and then we're ready to to do that interview. Great. So Michelle Great. won't be calling you. She asked me to follow up. Okay, super. And so my question to you is, is the application deadline, is it, it, it's is passed. it close? It's passed. Yes. Okay. It's so what? It's passed. It's passed. Yeah. Okay. So we, we will be one short applicant? one person until mm -hmm. June when the next round will occur. Well, we needed three. Well, well the, her thing said, because you added one, right? You added a, Last year we added yeah. another. Well, I will follow up with her. Her comment uh -huh. was we needed two, but I, I will follow up on that. We got it approved through city council yeah, I, that there's supposed to be nine. Yeah, so I will, so we only have one candidate. Okay. So we'll interview her and, um, Make a recommendation back to you so that we can get that to council. Okay, so that's handled. Yep. And then we need your position updates. Well, I have good news. It doesn't really impact you, but we have a new library director starting on the 14th, which I'm very excited about. His name is John Sullivan. And uh, we have conducted one interview for the senior services uh, manager since uh, our candidate uh, turned down the position. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a second interview uh, scheduled for November 21st, and you will be hearing from us about the meet and greet and inviting you all to be a part of that. Great. So Jeff, quick question. Um, do we know why the first candidate turned it down? Because it seemed like she went through the process. Um, I do, but I, with it being a public meeting, I'm not sure that I feel comfortable sharing those, okay. but would be happy to talk with you okay. afterwards. Uh, the second thing is that there is a rumor, and I like to squash rumors, <laughs> that uh, your candidate for the library was the third candidate that the first two turned you down. That is not true. Okay, thank you. I can clarify that. <laughs> so that's the position updates? Yep. And I have one more question. And mm -hmm. On the other two positions that we still have to fill in, uh, do you know what the process is on that? Can It'll wait. Just go ahead and post it again? or, or it, it won't be posted until the ne next cycle, which is mid-23. So you will be short two two members three possibly if if the council wouldn't choose to appoint the one person that was um, uh, the candidate now so would that affect the quorum much if there's two people it, it will yes that will go into yeah. Will. Yeah, that's what it will. yeah nobody can ever be asked no, you can't miss <laughs>
Is the quorum not a majority of the existing board members? Is it a majority That's of the nine? Eight, yeah. I'm not sure how I, that works. I will have to verify Up that. till now, it's been five. Yeah. I'll verify that and okay. let, her, let her know. Okay. Oh, excuse me, Dad. Okay. Thank you, sorry, Zach. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. So, Mayor, there is nothing to be done on this if we find someone that would have an interest before 23. There's nothing we could do on that. Huh? No. no. Oh, that is wow. the mayor exactly. deadlines for applications wow. and yeah. yeah. Okay. But I do think it's the quorum uh, of the existing board because I, I think so, but I wanna, on I council, we, you know, we have an empty seat and it's always a quorum if, 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 if you have enough. So then, since you've been working here two days, Jamie, <laughs> you want to tell us a little something about yourself? And oh, hey, you, new business, wait a second. What? Nothing. <laughs> it's sort of a position update. We yeah. filled a position. Yeah, so we want to hear from the positionee. <laughs> what would you like to hear? Give a little background about yourself because sure. not everybody was on the interview yes. committee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I lived in Colorado since 2011. I moved here from Colorado Springs. Um, I, was, I originally moved to Colorado Springs from Missouri. That's where I'm from to work for the county park system down there. So I was with El Paso County Parks and ran a nature center for five years. But my degree is in parks, recreation, and tourism. And I work for city, county, state park departments, both in Missouri and, and Colorado combined. Um, I, I really have a passion for programming. And so that's really where I've been in all of my park department jobs is planning programs and events for the public. So this is a really wonderful match. And seniors is my favorite demographic, so I'm really excited. Anything else you want to know? Questions, anybody? Do you have yeah. a dog? I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I live, I yes. just live very, I live very yeah. closely here on 9th Street, and I am just so surprised at how many people that have dogs here. I mean, of course, it's your choir. Is a dog oh, that's why I asked. <laughs> but everyone is walking their dogs. Yeah. It's yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. It's too bad there's not door pops. Yeah. What we say. Well, I've, I've heard that there are a couple, mm -hmm. but yeah, I've asked about yeah. that. Yeah. What got your attention to Longmont in particular? Um, I think I found this job on the Colorado Parks and Rec Association website, and it said seniors, and I said, I'm in. Oh, that's yeah. why it wasn't so much long month. I don't really know much about northern Colorado um, except for Fort Collins. I visited there several times. It's, it's one of my favorite places. Um, oh, by the end of the month in the morning. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so. Well, welcome. So, Jeff, it looks like you again, the supervisor's report. Oh. Well, oh, <laughs> it doesn't say acting. So who's yeah. acting today? Well, I was going to say other under other new business. Um, a number of you participated in the Casoa conversations. The mm -hmm. state, um, gosh, what is it? Age well, five year report. Yeah. That, where they look at aging across the state of Colorado. I did not know Colorado actually was the first state to do this. Um, so I went to the state online um, Kosoa update meeting a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We will be getting a Boulder County specific update, hopefully by the new year, and we will have them come and present at the Senior Center in general. We can also have them come and speak to the board specifically if you'd like. But an interesting statistic that has really stayed with me from that meeting is that um, for the state of Colorado, it varies from state to state, but for Colorado, the population of folks age 65 and better is expected to rise 36% in the next 10 years. Yep. Now, we serve people age 55 and better, so we're already, we're already getting that. The baby yep. boomers are all Slant. age 57 up at this point. Like, it has already occurred, and I thought about the fact that we've doubled our number of resource and counseling staff in the last three years. We have not doubled custodial staff, our front desk staff, our programming staff. Uh, so I think we need to really be thinking strategically and Jeff and I have already talked a lot about programming staff in particular about how to just keep up. We, we cannot keep up at this point programming wise with everything we've grown in the last 20 years. We haven't added programming staff in 20 years and we grew our Go catalog in that time from 15 pages to 56. Mm -hmm. um, 
and the registration process yeah. needs to be updated, which we talked oh. about in, you know, it's not That's user friendly. Thing. Applicants complain about getting on the site and filling out the application, yeah. so it's just not user friendly. <laughs> Your lucky Tom went back to doing meals on wheels. <laughs> I have a very big opinion about that. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 ten, it's 10 to 12 pages for, an yeah. for the application to get a job. So that's a lifeguard. that was a lifeguard issue, and I've heard from many young people that they can't be bothered. And I agree with them. That has been it. updated. Yeah. That has been updated. Yeah. They are just accepting resumes and moving the application. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. I know, finally. But that... that caused an issue. The other thing what you're referring to is how to register, and Marsha knows this well, for classes, outings, etc. on a system that was built by some company in Vermont that we don't have a contract with. Yes, yes we do. Oh, we do. Okay, yes. I, I guess it was Evergreened. Um, what? Evergreen? Evergreen. I don't know what that means. Okay, so, okay, <laughs> which means it keeps going without an evaluation of its use, mm -hmm. but, and it's very the, difficult for seniors. You, can, you can't just say that. Let me let me respond. So, we have purposely chosen to stay with RecTrack because we have such an investment with it that you can't just change overnight. There, it, it will cost a hundred thousand dollars at least to do that. So we know you can't change overnight. Right. But I'm not saying that we won't. We aren't looking at it. But it just the response that you said is that we, we're we don't. It, it, we're just going with it, and that's not the case. We are evaluating it. We we have to follow the budget cycle to be able to do things. We can't just do things in midstream. So. Just want to make sure that everybody heard that this isn't a flighty thing. This is something that that we're working on, but it, it just. I, you know, I appreciate what you're saying, Jeff. However, there has been not just from seniors, but from young people, and it it started with the pandemic when there had to be reservations for a lot of things, and there has been discussion here about that system and i understand that the utility for the city is that everybody can use it across all the platforms whether it's the museum the uh senior center the rec center it can be used across multiple platforms however in terms of user okay the users struggle with it and and I, I agree with that. Thus, the yellow sheet where you sign up for classes. Yeah. Every, I'd say the majority of people here, they bring their yellow sheet in. They don't even try to use that system. They can't. The, the challenge is there isn't just that many systems out there that we can go to. Each system, recreation is the bigger player in, in that. And trying to find what that other solution is has been a challenge. But I will assure you that we'll have something in the works uh, for the future. I guess I, I, yeah, I, but I have not 10 just years. one question. <laughs> what can we do to help? You know, I sit here and I listen and I think about the Senior Center and the obstacles for my colleagues here. And my question is, well, what can I do to help that? Can a, can a volunteer person do something to help? Can we set up a registration desk? Can we have somebody that can do phone work? I mean, I know the main system, but what I'm looking at is what do we do in the interim and how can we serve our people here what can I personally do to help? And maybe we could think about that. You know, maybe I could come up with some 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 suggestions about how we can make a difference. Some of the okay. volunteers are already making phone calls when things right. get canceled, but it's almost like if we could put in another desk somewhere's okay. near uh, reception. 
because they get slammed with those yellow sheets that they're processing. Yeah, they get it's, slammed. It, it, do I need to come sit a couple hours a week in the so, in, in the, so let me let me say we did request another five hours for our front desk yeah, staff this yeah. year. It did not get through the budget. Right. We will be requesting that again. Well, well, well. I mean, honestly, I just always come from that place. Well, yeah, we this help. is frustrating as hell. Mm -hmm. What can I do to help? Or who can I get? Or who can I recruit? Or Give me some ideas in, in a way that I can make a difference. Does it have to be entered into the system right away when, when somebody brings in the yellow sheets? And if it position fills and you brought your sheet in first but you didn't get a slot, that's your pretty upsetting. Yeah. Right, okay. right. I just want to understand the yellow. In. Can you show me so, the yellow sheet? Yeah, so about 75% or 80% of our registrations are via phone or in person. And the, there are about twenty percent of people are doing it online. I figured out how to do that. Um, the front desk handles all of that for numerous people. You know, a big population increase since we first started doing it, and the programs were less to choose from. Yeah, it's huge now. During registration days, we can get rec staff to come over and help during those. Well, front, that, the, that helps. We have to ask days. the front desk, I think, because part of the issue is which computers are set up to take payment. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But we, we can work through that because yeah. of the. Sloan could help with the different credit cards that would allow that to happen on a, a laptop. Yeah. So, so we could help. That doesn't help every day to day, but mm -hmm. during those. So that first yeah. week where yeah. it opens, that week we get a lot yeah. of registrations. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to downplay yeah. the the software. I I get that, yeah. but yeah, we're, we're doing, trying to yeah, we're doing what we can, up. and if if I will make a commitment that we will that I will come back uh, early next year with kind of what we're we're looking at. Okay. Just the front desk needs help. They really yeah, do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Well, okay. yeah. we have a volunteer. So, so I have a question: Is uh, Louisville and Boulder on the same system? I don't know offhand. Boulder is not. They're oh. on active. They're on, on a different yeah. system because I registered. I, I've given up on this system, so I registered for a number of things in Louisville, and I have to tell you that the ease of registration is. I, I'm not sure if they're on the same system. But I've signed up for classes, I've signed up for swimming, because it's easier. And I know the museum is on the same system, mm -hmm. and my colleagues have heard this before my fellow council members. It took them 45 minutes to give me tickets. Mm -hmm. And then they contacted me the next day to tell me that some of the tickets were incorrect. And I was very patient. I realized it wasn't their issue. It was the system's issue, and that's what the young man told me behind the counter. And that, I, I think for someone who just wants to, I went to the, I went to the museum specifically because the online system is such a mess. But they're working the same thing. One thing they told me, and I didn't really believe this, but maybe I should have, he said, we get kicked off because the rec center is using it. That, that can't be true. That That's can't be true. true. I was like, yeah. what? It, it's, it sounds to me like there may be some training issues for some of the staff yes, as well. Yes. As as somebody that um, goes on, I agree the, the online part of trying to register is very difficult. And until you get used to doing it, it, it is bad. First time people struggle all the time and that has to improve. But I, I do think that there is some training things that sure. we can do to help sure. with what you just talked about. Well, thank you for that. I yeah. think that um, you know I'm an ex I'm an experienced user, yeah. and I just like said, okay, I'm not doing anything. I'm done. Yeah. In Boulder, I believe, and I, you said Boulder too. They use Active.com. They were one of the companies we considered before right. we went to RecTrack, and there was a real downside to that because they collected all the money and then would send us the money. Right, uh, uh, but they they took a large percentage of that, and we chose not to go that way because 
of the, the ongoing cost sure. of it. So, um, but I will reach out to Louisville and see what what their yeah, I don't know what they're well. on, but they it, it's much much easier. Recreation right. is probably one of the bigger users in our area of rack track for the the vast sure. number of things that we do, and so not having to use multiple systems would be important to us. But if that if they can provide a better online experience, we would certainly consider that. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Any other thing? Yeah. What was, uh, what was clarification, clarification on the 35% uh, percent increase on the people over 65? Is that over the next five or 10 years? 10 years. 10 years. Okay. In the state of Colorado. Okay, in the state. And, and do we know what, uh, what the population is or what the latest uh, or the most recent uh, information is on seniors in Longmont? I don't have that for Longmont, but the, the Boulder County report will break down okay. information by city, by unincorporated parts of the county. So we will get that local specific data. It just will probably be the new year. Yeah, I actually went to the Zoom meeting on that for Boulder County. And um, for Boulder County, the, the population that they gave was 14 to 15%. Uh, it's 27.8% in South Central Colorado. So wow. they have, I was, I was amazed at that, that they have had, they have significant population. Um, and Colorado overall is the sixth youngest state. So, <laughs> so that speaks to what the next 10 years is gonna look like. And it's gonna mm. change the face of everything about our culture. Right? Okay. I, I don't think we really take that into account that the baby boomers have dramatically changed <coughs> the culture every age they've hit, right? right. And that's, that's gonna still be happening. Quick question. Michelle's Quick question. been saying that for 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> Quick question for Mayor Peck. I know that uh, Boulder County got $35 million from the American Rescue Plan, and I realized that uh, uh, the city of Longmont got $13 million out of that pot. Um, $8 million of that, I believe, went to affordable housing, from what I understand. I'm wondering what happened to the other $5 million, and I've asked several council people. Um, <laughs> and it hasn't been uh, uh, transparent. That's right, it's not. <laughs> okay, so there we go. As to um, that ether of five million, because what I've heard a lot here uh, from our colleagues in the city is that there's not money for things, and so I'm wondering where this five million ether money is. <laughs> I know that one and a half million is set aside for homelessness, and um, we're in discussions. I've been in discussions with uh, Harold for over a year, which we are getting ready to bring forth to council and to the public as to what some ideas as to what to do with that one and a half. Um, I think the problem with the ARPA money is that it's one time capital right, one -time. money. Right, exactly. So, it's not good for employees. It's no, not, it's capital. It's capital. So I think that um, there is no transparency because there are so many divisions in the city that are asking for it. And it hasn't been appropriated. Okay. That's, the only, that's the only pile of money that I know about. But to say it's going to be for something and then that changes could be a real problem, not only exactly. for the for the department, but also for the public, as far as I thought you were going to do X, Y, Z. We're, we're having that right now uh, on the county because they got over $3 million to uh, put in, to re <clears throat> reinstate the LX1 line, uh, bus that goes down I-25 to Denver, and they didn't do it. So we're having that battle right there. So I think that's part of the problem is not telling where it's going to go until you figured out the best way for it in the city. So. I also know we got $981,000 from the sale of the Denver Broncos, which is to be geared towards uh, youth programs. 
um, that that is specifically targeted for that. So thinking about all those kids in the same Ferrain building. <laughs> yeah, and I, you yeah. know, I need to ask Jim Golden, the, <clears throat> is that actually, is are, what are the parameters on that money? Because yeah. the request for that money is coming from I'm sure. all different yeah. mm -hmm. areas. And I, you know, and they, people are asking me, and I thought, I need to know exactly. Yeah. I, I think it's for youth sports, but there's some finagling with it to move it into something else under that. I mean, for me, it was just youth, and it I, didn't have to be sports. Yeah, I, 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 when, what I understand, it's just youth programs, not, not specifically youth sports. So youth programs, and those programs can be a number of things. Uh, that's where we're getting yeah. tons of requests. That's what I wanted to nail it down. Exactly what are the parameters of this money? Any other things on the supervisor report? Uh, yeah, I have two things I'll talk about. Okay. So um, we have posted the director of human services, which will be a part, senior services will report to that director. Okay. Uh, Joni Marsh, assistant city manager, is leading that effort. Uh, I believe we'll have the uh, first interviews sometime before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So that's moving forward. Uh, Brandy has stepped down, as you all know, as the acting manager. Uh, Christina Pacheco, who is the manager of Children, Youth, and Families, and myself are splitting those responsibilities until we can get the uh, new manager hired. Okay. And I'm keeping responsibility for five of our staff, the counselor and resource staff, permanently. Okay. I have one quick question. Uh, one more, go ahead. This has nothing to do with this. Okay. Um, do you want me to report in on some other pieces? Yeah, yeah. So the pieces. winter go is out. And I want to say thank you to Teresa Schulte, who stepped in to fill gap as the acting recreation supervisor until we could get Jamie on board and Char Sloan. They planned a full normal winter quarter here. And they did a fantastic job with the volunteer appreciation. Yeah. Volunteer appreciation was fantastic. We've gotten so much good feedback. And I think in part that's because we hadn't had a volunteer appreciation the whole pandemic. Yeah. Um, but in part, even though our staff agreed not to go overboard planning that event, they did. They did, <laughs> as usual. Um, and it was incredibly fun, and we are already starting our plans for next year's volunteer appreciation. Um, open house is this Saturday, and we've got the schedule almost fully lined up. People keep kind of wanting to jump in at the last second. I think you're going to be surprised at the attendance. I hope so, because yeah. our, our outreach on next door and Eventbrite didn't really garner any attention that's visible. Mm -hmm. Maybe a lot of people saw it and just didn't comment or like it or, or mm -hmm. whatnot, but yeah. it's curious if those efforts are gonna pay off. I will say there was for liaison comments, but since it's a, a, a specific comment, a topic here, um, you said the schedule is almost filled out. Um, my mentee from um, Silver Creek, um, who was doing the Bug Pit Gap event, mm -hmm. has a lot of literature left mm -hmm. and would like to table at the open house if possible. No way. I, no, I would say no, because we're pretty packed in the building and it's really focused on senior services. And, and I mm -hmm. understand that a lot of seniors use pharmaceutical take back events, but it's not really focused on older adults. She can certainly bring flyers and we can have flyers in our whole resource closet. Um, but I don't think we would give her a table. We have said no to city staff who have asked for a table at our open house. Okay. Everybody yeah. wants to market to seniors, but our open house is really about senior services. Yes. And so then the, her, her follow-on question is, if she can't be at the open house, can she come some afternoon and just be present um, to give out information, not about the event since it's over, no. but about the other spots where drop-off is possible? You can put her in touch with me. Okay. Yeah. Because we do have folks come okay. to tabling from time to time. Yeah, she has. We're also very cautious about that. Yeah. She's very sweet. So I don't think she'd be a problem. But um, yeah. I still tell her to do it. Thank you. Any other. 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 Any
Yeah. More still things there. Well, if there's space, the library has a lot of space. Yeah. Any other supervisory comments? Okay. City Council. You know Short and sweet, sweet Marsha. Be, be, yeah. before, I don't know if uh, we have other. Oh, is that? That's uh, the last uh, In other business. Uh, I, I was just going to bring up something, or do you want to just go ahead and go that way and do it if you'll ask? My, qu my question had to do with uh, are you having the same problem with other boards and filling positions? Yes. All right. That's what, just like just like you even paid positions. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was just wondering, I was just surprised that there's only one person that had applied for the board. And uh, I thought that would be more on that. But. People are are kind of one thing is just emerging. You know, you wouldn't think it would take this long, but it is. Um, but the all the boards I am on are on are actively recruiting and not finding enough. Yeah. So, um, you know, we'll see how it turned out. I haven't, I didn't ask for a count on the deadline day. So, but, but it was not easy for any of them. Um, the only um, thing that I have to say is, is that uh, there is apparently uh, on the, in the, this is always after the LAJ board meeting. So there's not, a lot of council stuff on the top of my mind, but the LHA is is um, very important to, you know, to this board because everything we've got now, the people more or less senior housing. Um, so um, although they continue to struggle financially, at least they understand now where the, the squeeze points are and where there are points of improvement. And they don't have their new grade from the HUD inventory yet, but they were told verbally that it's, you know, a, a several times improvement. They don't, they don't get to go from fail to um, excellent in, in one huge leap, but they are going from probably going to fail from fail to satisfactory. Um, so that's really a huge important thing. Um, the uh, there are commercial meth detectors apparently now, and so mm. that will be on a soon budget because the cost of that, you wouldn't think, you always have the myth of the sweet old folks, you know? Mm -mm. You know, we, we have, have units down for meth decontamination in senior housing, and it's kind of shocking. Mm. But there it is. Um, the other news is is that it's looking likely that the housing needs survey is going to say don't build more senior housing. Right. So um, if there's if there is a counter argument that any of your various groups you can make, now is the time because the city council retreat is coming up. I I have made the argument about statistics and that the senior population is growing so dramatically and what I have heard is that we already have more senior specific housing stock than most comparable areas. Yes, we do. But I see your butt in there. Well, I like but I think we need more. <laughs> and, and, and just to let you know, I actually applied to the one Oh, but an application. Good. Good. You know how strongly I feel about yes. it, and mm -hmm. I thought yes. Yes. they have three positions. Advisory board. No, that's yes. right. She's going to advise them. <laughs> yes. Watch out. I, I apologize that I have to leave early. Okay. Uh, that's it. I have oh, to go also. Thank yes. you very much. And, for and so, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. I have one more short statement, which is okay. the takeaway from this discussion for me was if you can get down to the city council and talk about the damn crosswalks. <laughs> you know, I think we're not hearing from the public nearly enough. It usually has a big effect. And, um, it, you know, just hearing it quantified, I mean, think about what you're doing when you're pacing off your yard or something to figure out how much edging you need. You know, 3.4 feet per second is a pretty brisk walk. And yeah, that's okay for a 27-year-old pedestrian wearing sneakers. Mm -hmm. Anybody else can't walk that fast. So I hate the thought that it's going to take deaths 
That's what we oh, use. That's what I say. It's three deaths. And then, and then you get something done. It's three deaths. Yeah. I'm sure. That's I don't want to burn that book, by the way. <laughs> Where do they keep it? <laughs> Who can grab it? I, I think I know, actually. It's probably <laughs> electronic <laughs> also. So you're going to have to hack. All right. Do we need anything on, well, any other regular business? Dave, did we get that form that for the open house, did we get it translated? I don't know. We asked them to. Um, and ask at the front desk on the way out? Yeah, okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I asked them a couple of times to put Spanish on the back. Yep. And uh, I, I assume it was done, but I don't know that for a fact. I can check. Okay. okay. I just. Janine, Area Agency on Aging. Okay. Um, just, we don't have time today, but I did go to the the COSOA meeting for Boulder County. If anybody wants any information or statistics specific from that meeting, let me know and I'm happy to share it with you. Um, we discussed this last month, um, some issues in Lafayette that they are starting their own um, limited uh, free transportation for seniors from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily, which is uh, a new thing for them. Uh, Their city is paying it, well, the city mm -hmm. of Lafayette, wow. And uh, um, also discuss their, their problems with elder care support. So I think sometimes it's important for us to be in tune with what goes on with our our sister cities in the county because we can all learn from each other. Um, the biggest issue in terms of transportation for everybody is availability of drivers and uh, currently Boulder County is looking to see if they can promote vol a volunteer workforce. Uh, to help with driving and transportation, especially. Um, there's ongoing issues in and around uh, the homelessness uh, in Boulder County. We actually have a coordinator named Heidi Grove, who I did not know we had a specific homeless person. Uh, so. Uh, and one final thing just to be aware of, uh, pharmacies now, um, pharmacists specifically, are able to refuse to fill prescriptions for any pain medications. And this does impact um, the older adult community uh, because their ability to refuse filling prescriptions uh, is not reason specific. So a person can be post-op, uh, they can be a cancer person, and it will be up to the individual pharmacist um, to decide whether they are comfortable filling prescriptions. And I think it's important that we know that and be aware of that and kind of get a sense uh, to support our community in what pharmacies are less apt to refuse. Um, it, there's a lot of controversy about pain medication, but there certainly is reason for all of us that sometimes we need pain medication. And now that that is going to be at the discretion of the individual pharmacist. Uh, we need to have a way to help people find other alternatives. Okay. So, I'm not, surprised. That, I'm not surprised because um, the people over 65 are the largest uh, population that gets uh, uh, addicted to opioid drugs. So I'm really kind of not surprised because they're limiting you go to the emergency room on Wednesday, you're going to get eight pills until you see your PCP. Yeah, I, it's really I, I do understand that. Yeah. And there are, I guess because I spent eight years in pain management, mm -hmm. there are people that um, 
in our age group that also are more apt to have surgeries, right. that are more apt to have chronic diseases, mm -hmm. including cancer, that can be, uh, that can require uh, medication and treatment. And not everyone that uses medication is addicted. Right, I, I have to agree with you, but there, there is- Yeah, there, I know. There is a, a I real- I get it, but- Shutting the door. Yes. It's just shutting the door. It's not part. Is it a liability factor or abuse mm -hmm. factor? Or what it's is an it? abuse factor. Abuse. It's, okay. it's it, you know, I have lots of opinions about it, Art, and I'll keep them to myself. But um, the truth is that we do have major abuse issues, especially right. in our younger population. But there is now and has always been a place for treating mm -hmm. chronic pain. And uh, I think that um, it's it's a problem, it's a big problem, and uh, you know, now what we need to do is find, find a way to help our colleagues and help people find the treatment that they need, hmm. is what I'm saying. Moving on to the friends, um, to the stock market, their investments are down, but they're healthy. Um, they'll be at the open house. They have prepared their uh, annual campaign letter so that anybody who has contributed at least a dollar can attend their annual meeting, which is in January. And you can hear all that they've done, which is quite a lot. They have four members up for renewal and it looks like they'll be able to fill those positions so i don't know what they're doing differently but they're going to be able to fill their board they don't have to go through the the rigmarole exactly <laughs> <laughs> so those are the highlights from what the friends are up to i'd encourage you to think about attending the January meeting to listen to all the nuts and bolts and how they operate. Anything from the Boulder County Latino Coalition? No, nothing. Okay. Long Lawn Economic Development? Nothing? Okay. Sustainability, David? Anything since we last met? I, not really. Just okay. a brief, brief comment. Uh, last time I mentioned that uh, the sustainability is uh, resilient. Sustainability, long month. I always get it mixed up. Sustainable okay. resilience. All right. Yeah, there you go. I got to figure it out. Name. SRL. Yeah. <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> uh, that, I mentioned that uh, Energy Smart has a uh, uh, service available, and I had the phone number that you could call to uh, have consultation regarding enveloping your house and yeah. uh, insulation, all those kinds of things. I actually called them, and to tell the truth, I was a little disappointed. There was only. Uh, one person, I think, and all I, as I understood it, all they really did was refer to other agencies, huh. uh, and so it didn't seem to be all that productive, but I did have a thought, and I looked in the, the Go catalog, and I noticed that in the last catalog, the, um, the magazine, there was a, a general overview of the city sustainability initiative, and it's already passed, but. I'm just wondering if, uh, with all the stuff that's going on and all the stuff that's coming down the pike, maybe there should be a section in the Go magazine regarding resources that seniors might use. And uh, I'd be willing to work on that. And I don't know who actually, I don't know how it's done. You know, I don't know who That would it. probably be a brandy. Right. Yeah, brandy. Yeah, and there you have the new Go. I don't. I, this is the last Get it one. on the way out. Yeah, right. It's not on... That information isn't on that uh, other services page. It, I, it there don't, I didn't a, see it. No. Okay. Uh, so I'm just I'm just saying that there's a lot of stuff going on. It could be probably included. In yeah, just drop her a suggestion, yeah, and I she'll will. get it to the right person. Yeah, I will. You know, when I had my energy assessment done earlier this year, um, I didn't get much satisfaction from Boulder County Energy Smart either because we are in the Flat River Power Authority service area, we can go to the Efficiency Works website and get a referral through them 
Um, so you prpa.org or efficiencyworks.org, I think. And, um, and uh, they are also you know, referring to a contractor, um, but they were effective about it. They followed up. They did a good job with the one oversight. Um, and so uh, that might be the way to go. You know, I, I, I did the same thing uh, like six, seven months ago, and mm -hmm. they were very good. Yeah. They were very good. It's the same one that I gave to you. Yeah, and, so uh, recommending them is yeah, probably so good. That kind of information just needs to be published a little bit to mm -hmm. spread. A little good bit. idea. And then engaging care in communities is actually on hold. They're waiting to see what the city of Longmont wants to do as far as funding any further mm -hmm. engagement with the people on the committee. So that hasn't met since the summer sometime. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna step out. Are you sure it's me for a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. A second. A second. There we go. Thank you for letting me join. Thanks. Thanks.